Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I want to talk about naming in Python and what the underscore means. Someone in chat said, hey, why are some of your functions prefixed with an underscore? And I'll tell you why that is today. All right, so naming in Python, uh, or at least variables in Python, don't have any sort of scoping or privacy like other, I guess they have scoping. They don't have privacy like other languages. Uh, for instance, in C++, you have like private, protected, and public. Uh, for different access levels based on whether you can access things internally or externally. In Python, there's no such thing. Everything is always accessible, always. Um, but the private nature of variables is enforced, or in, I guess not enforced, uh, but indicated by a naming convention, convention. And the convention that's used for that is to underscore prefix things that are private. And so... Uh, let's say that I was building a function or a, a module here named T because T is a great module name uh, and I had you know some public API uh, I would name that public API without a leading underscore to indicate that this function is something that you know someone should be able to call um, and then if I had a private API I would prefix that private API with some sort of underscore and maybe the public API calls that private API and you know, this is used. This function is only used internally, and then this one is exposed so that others can import this function from this module and call them. Um, and you can imagine the same thing with classes. Like you have a, a public class, and uh, Python uses Pascal case for uh, class naming. But you might imagine a private class, which is you know private class something something like that. Um, and underscore prefixed. Uh, I see this used a lot less often. Sometimes, sometimes types will even be, you know, normal Pascal case without a leading underscore and just not exposed in double under all or, or documented to be non-public. Um, so, so Python leans a lot on, you know, people adhering to conventions and reading documentation for which things are private and public. That's kind of the basics for underscore. This actually. Uh, there's actually kind of two more scenarios where underscore matters. Uh, well, three. One is uh, underscore controls whether something is automatically imported from a star import. Now, granted, uh, I would argue that you should never use a star import. I actually did a video on star imports, so I will link that below. I think I also talk about this and that. Um, but if you do from t import star uh, and then look at all the things that got imported, you can see that we imported public class, but we did not import private class or private API. Um, we also imported public API. You'll notice that there are some things that have underscores here. Oh, and these these are from my dot files, so you can ignore these over here. Um, there are some underscored things, but these are double double underscored things. We'll talk about those in a minute as well. Um, but yeah, you know, a leading underscore at the model scope without double under all, double double under all uh, will make you know, only public names, public names be star imported. Uh, the other thing to look at here is the naming of variables and functions inside of a class. So if we have a class here, you know, we can again have a private API here and, you know, a uh, public API as well. And these are named similarly. Uh, however, there are two other things in classes that work a little bit differently. And the first of those is a Two underscore, um, a two underscore prefix name, and I'm going to call this a mangled API. So, what Python does, let's actually make double under in it and put a breakpoint in here just so you can see how this works. So, what Python does when it sees an attribute of an object that has two underscores before it, but not two underscores after it, is it will name mangle that. And so what it does is it puts an underscore and then the class name in front of it um, so that this API is specific to that particular class. And the reason that it does this and the, the idea behind name mangling and why you might need to use this is in an inheritance hierarchy, you might want to write an API that only is intended for your particular class and not for anything else in the inheritance hierarchy. And also, uh, you know, not going to collide with some some person that comes along and inherits from your class and maybe implements a common name for an API. And so what you can do is you can double underscore so that they never collide. It's not intended as a, as a manner for privacy, but you could use it for that as well. Uh, I think the, the primary usage is to avoid collisions there. But let me show you how this executes. Um, so Python 3-I-IMT. 
interactive and module and T, and you can see we're in the breakpoint of double inner init. And if we look at self, we look at the attributes on it. Actually, we'll do pp dir self, which I showed this on stream and it just like blew some people's minds, but it's it's a lot easier way to see all of the things in here. Um, but you can see that this double inner mangle name doesn't appear in this list here. However, it is up here and you can see underscore then class name and then double underscore. I don't know if this behavior is, is something to rely on, but um, yeah, you'll, you'll need to do that. Also, I find that double underscored stuff is a real pain in the butt when you're dealing with a debugger because the debugger doesn't know about that. So if you do self dot double under mangled API, uh, you'll get an attribute error here in the debugger because the debugger doesn't know any better. Uh, there's some like magical part of compilation step that causes this name to get changed uh, at runtime. But you can access the name mangled version of it, mangled API, and so you can see that works. Now there's another underscore, which is what's called a magic uh, method, which is two underscores at the beginning and at the end. And there are a bunch of these functions that are conventions in Python. So for instance, like double under init is one of those. Uh, this is the class initialization function that gets called when objects are built. Uh, you know, there's double under stir for converting an object into a string. There's double under wrapper for converting it into a representation. Um, but basically what these are supposed to be, and uh, you can make your own of these, but it's discouraged if I recall correctly reading the docs. Um, but you can make your own of these, but the idea behind them is uh, you can write kind of a duck typing API that anything should support. And then any class could implement this double double under API and then satisfy your API constraints. And so like, you know, a function which implements double under wrapper, uh, you know, return wrapper of C for, for whatever reason, uh, this double under wrapper can be signaled by calling wrapper on the object. Uh, oops, wrapper wrapper oh my goodness uh, typing today has been a real struggle for some reason uh, but then you can see oh, we're in our initialization you can see like because it implemented double under wrapper that satisfied the implementation of this wrapper function so anything that implements that could be uh, a value here um, and I think, yeah, I think that's all of the different cases where underscore happens. So mostly it's for conventional public private. Um, there's also name mangling and, you know, double double underscored magic methods. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If you have another, or if you have other things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.